Well, good evening, guys. Um, I started off this video showing you the system running. You might have heard a rattle. I don't know. Um, there is still some rattling back there that I need to work on. Um, and I wanted to show you what the settings are on the radio at this time as I use it. Um, I wrote down some notes here to try to make it easier for me to write down everything. Uh, I just remembered uh, something else. Um, oh, I already got that written down, so never mind. Huh. All right. For many, this might be a very boring video, but this is mostly for those who are will looking to update their stereo. And I've done the first general set of updating the stereo while keeping the original amplifier. Um, that this is in the Touring. Uh, a lot of this would work with the EX as well to a certain extent. Um, basically, the speakers are the same uh, sans a, uh, a subwoofer, uh, which you can also uh, add. Um, I wanted to give you the ideas of what happened, what was involved, um, and was it worth it? Uh, what really, you know, what, what are the pros and cons and what's going on with this system? <clears throat> All right, well, the system is basically 95% or 90% set. Uh, I still need to do more dynamating. Uh, and also, um, but the speakers are pretty much set the way they're going to be. I don't think I'm going to fool around with the center speaker anymore. We replaced it with a Kicker KS series. I think it was a KS. Um, kind of hard to read this stuff. I do apologize. Uh, KSC series uh, 350, which I sent uh, one out to a lucky winner. Or an unlucky winner. Um, <clears throat> but basically, uh, I wanted to change that to a larger one. I might do that in the future, but it's a little difficult. It is something I still think needs to be done, but we'll look into it. <clears throat> Can a touring owner who is not overly satisfied with their uh, system upgrade it without changing the amplifier? Mostly, yes. Um... The speakers that are in this car are obviously very cheap. Um, the system uses a lot of trickery uh, with sound and, and uh, of course, the uh, noise uh, canceling system that's built in to, to make the system sound better than it is. I mean, you saw a video in the last video of what the subwoofer looks like, and it's a joke. Uh, it, weighs less, <laughs> it weighs less than one of the tweeters. It's really, but it's amazing what they can get out of it. Um, and this is also with the EX. Uh, can it, can it be done? Uh, it's a passive yes. Uh, I'm going to talk mostly based on the Touring, but you can figure most of this can go for the EX. Now, the I replaced uh, the two main set of speakers in the EX. Uh, there would be two six and a half inch speakers uh, in the doors with one inch uh, tweeters in the doors and in the back deck, uh, six and a half inch uh, main drivers uh, with uh, one inch tweeters on the back deck. The uh, Touring adds a three and a half inch center, <clears throat> and the um, uh, and a uh, eight inch uh, sub. All of it running at four ohms. Um, you can replace all of these speakers uh, relatively without having to do much of anything. Um, <clears throat> now replacing the front speakers, I used uh, I used the QSS sixty five a kicker component speakers. Uh, these were pretty high-end speakers. Um, they sound really nice. The nice thing is that they fit very well. The tweeters fit almost perfectly into the front door. So if you go with these, these are going to fit perfectly in both your um, uh, in both your uh, EX and Touring models. And the 6.5-inch KSC350 will fit perfectly, as I showed you on the video, uh, for the uh, Touring. Uh, the rears are a bit more difficult. Uh, the six and a half inch uh, main drivers will will fit fine as long as you use the, sp uh, the speaker rings. Uh, however, uh, the tweeters will not fit easily. Uh, you will have to do some changing. So you got to keep in mind this is going to be a permanent change. Um, so you know you might want to do different size tweeters. But I, personally, I think it's perfectly uh, perfectly fine. Um, how it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Changing these uh, speakers will give you a more balanced sound to the system. Uh, a little less screechiness, a little bit more uh, depth. Um, I also did a lot of matting on the doors. The doors, basically this car has almost no sound suppression whatsoever. It's all done in the ANC, uh, the uh, 
uh, audio noise canceling system. Uh, this car has, <laughs> I mean, almost nothing uh, to keep the sound out of it. Um, so it's definitely worth it. It also helps keep the uh, vibrations back and forth, uh, you know, from the speakers coming off the back of the baffles of the speakers uh, from bouncing around too much. You know, it's a little too technical, a little bit way beyond my, my range. Uh, but the sound is definitely better. Uh, unfortunately, you still have to deal um, with uh, the... Uh, uh, oh, my God. Well, it's the middle of the night, so it's, gonna, it's, it's very tough for me to bring up these words. Uh, but the digital sound uh, design of the uh, amplifier, especially in the Touring, uh, probably also similar uh, in the EX. But in the Touring, it's extremely uh, tweedy, uh, very high-end. Uh, it, it even has a setting called Neural. But it show, shoves a lot into the center speaker, which is just way too much and causes a lot of screechiness. Uh, your music, uh, your sources of your music are going to make a big difference, too. You need to make sure you get very high-quality sources to your music. And when you get into the high volumes, you're going to still end up with a lot of screechiness. Uh, even with the change over the speakers, they're still a little too bright. Um, there's not much you can do because of the DSP in the system, uh, the digital sound processor in the system. It's got its own design and set, and you really can't fool much with it with this setup if without actually changing the amp or, or putting uh, something in between, uh, you know, outside to change the actual uh, settings um, of the DSP so you can shape your music however you want. Uh, I did use the crossovers to these speakers. Uh, the crossovers clean the sound quite a bit, uh, make it a little bit better. But you can put. Uh, uh, I did notice one thing: the volume is slightly lower. Uh, that probably has to do with the efficiency of these better speakers. Uh, so they probably uh, suck up a lot more wattage uh, and power. One big caveat for those with the um, uh, with the um, touring. You can't replace the sub without putting an amplifier to that sub. The system will not push enough wattage to this to whatever. If you give it, if you put a real sub in there, as opposed to the the ridiculous thing that they got the wafer thing they got in there, it will not vibrate enough to make enough noise to be worthwhile. You have to have an amplifier. Um, doesn't have to be a big one, but something that pushes out good power. Uh, I currently uh, uh, was using on my 12 inch woofer. I had a, a sub box I had hooked up. Uh, it helped keep the rattling and so forth down. And it gave me, you know, more bass, you know, and I didn't want to have to deal with the rattling until I started taking the deck apart and I started dynamating in there. Uh, but the um, the amp I use is the Audio Control ACM-1.300. Uh, the nice thing, the audio controls are very good amplifiers. Uh, they're pricey. They are pricey. Uh, this one is basically made to be a monoblock. It will run at uh, 2, 4 ohms, and so forth, uh, which means you can go with a 2-ohm subwoofer if you want to get something higher end that has 2 ohms. Uh, the subwoofer I got is a 4-ohm, 2-ohm dual voice coil, you, voice coil, so you can switch it back and forth. Uh, I'm going to, uh, as I go through this video, I'm going to start listing the uh, names of all the parts I used in this, uh, or at least I'm going to try to if I can get this video done right. I'm sorry, it's so late at night. I just wanted to get this out so could, people could know. But you will have to have something to push that sub. Otherwise, you'll have to put your subwoofer at maximum, and it still won't give you the bass you want, and you're going to be very, very unhappy. So all those who just want to change the speakers, and there's a built-in sub, you're going to have to add an amplifier for the sub. doesn't have to be super powerful. Uh, this amplifier, I think, is rated at 300 watts, uh, 150 at 4 ohms, uh, uh, 300 at 2 ohms. I think I'm running at 4 ohms right now. Uh, and it gives plenty of bass. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an 8-inch uh, sub in the uh, thing in the uh, touring. <clears throat> sound is definitely very good. Now, as you saw in my settings, I shut off the neural sound. The neural sound adds kind of a strange 3D kind of effect, but it also tends to make the center speaker even screechier. I didn't think that was even possible, but it does. Uh, the neural sound was very important before I changed all the speakers uh, because it added a lot of class to the sound. But with the new speakers, I don't need the neural sound. Uh, it sounds great without it. It sounds interesting with it too, but I, I'd, I'd rather cut down uh, the screechiness uh, of the sound. Um, the, as I said, the, bay, the rear decks were not all that hard. I, as you saw in the last video, it, it's a lot of, it's four bolts and a bunch of clips and, and so forth. But you're going to have to do a lot of foaming, especially if you put a good sub in there. Um, personally, I'm going to take my 12-inch sub out. I don't need it. 
The 8-inch sub gives plenty and plenty of bass. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, with the audio control amplifier, a real nice thing about the audio control amplifier, you're going to have to get it. You're probably going to want to get an amplifier with speaker uh, line inputs. That way you don't have to, you know, you don't have to switch to anything else. You can literally run, you can literally uh, 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 leach directly off the line that was normally going into the original sub uh, subwoofer, the plug. You can run the line out of that right into the audio control. Uh, it'll take speaker line inputs, and then you can set it uh, however you want, and then run the lines out of there into the uh, sub, and that'll give you all your power. That's the nice thing about the audio controls, but they are expensive. If you have to find something with speaker level inputs, it'll be much easier to deal with because you don't have line level inputs at, at this point uh, coming off the, uh, the factory amp. Uh, things I wanted to know. Uh, let's go over. Uh, as I said, the sub won't work without an amp. You have to have an amp if you're going to put a real sub in there. Uh, what what was in there is not a sub. I don't know what the hell it is, but it was amazing what it did, though. Uh, tweeters will not fit in the rear deck. Uh, as I said, you're going to need half inch or one inch, and they can't be adorned tweeters, which most of them are going to have adornments on it, uh, in order to fit in those openings. And that you'll just have to cut those, op uh, you know, cut the edges of the openings off, and just kind of hot glue your uh, tweeters in in there. Uh, what else is there? Uh, yeah, well, you're going to get a lot of rattles back there, too. So uh, I, I recommend at this point you're going to use foam on the edges uh, of a lot of your um, pieces that are disconnected. Uh, we got a lot of um, foam from uh, for uh, air conditioners. Worked very well. Uh, it's not completely done. There's still some uh, rattling. The big rattling problem we're having now is basically the hump of the um, third stoplight. Uh, when the door gets really loud, it kind of rattles a little bit against the glass. So we're probably going to put something soft on top of that to, to, to shut that thing up and so forth. Uh, of course, the center is still too bright. As you'll see, I lowered my treble in the video. Treble is down. I put the bass up a little bit and the sub is up one, one notch. I left the, uh, the, uh, uh, the mid-range in the middle. Uh, I don't recommend using the neural sound at that point either. You should cut the neural sound off. Once you get good speakers in there, you won't want you, won't, you probably won't need the neural sound. Um, I I I I thought the volume was more compromised than it is. What it turned out is I was pushing some of the sound to the rear speakers to try to shut that center speaker down a little and, and shut off the, the the brightness, but the volume's not too bad. You might lose a little bit of volume with these better speakers, but you can deal with it. Uh, you know, I was going to show you stereo settings, and of course, uh, oh, the crossovers. <laughs> you have to pad those two. We're going to have to find a good spot to put the crossovers for them. I do recommend using the crossovers. Uh, you could try going direct to the speakers to see what the system sounds like. I have a feeling with the crossovers, it's cut the brightness of the system down quite a bit. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with a, the system's still going to sound too screechy at very high volumes. Uh, for most people, you're not going to notice it at, at lower volumes and mid volumes. It, it's perfectly fine. But when you start pumping up the volume, Boy, is it screechy. Here's something that's going to be a little bit more controversial. The ANC. That's the uh, auto noise cancellation system in this car. This car has a, has a fair amount of road noise from the, from the tires as far as I'm concerned. I drove for about two weeks without the ANC on. Now, I hadn't replaced the rear speakers, but I had replaced the front speakers. The system sounded so much better, but it didn't sound right. Something was not right, and I noticed that the road was really overpowering. Uh, the sound in the car was really loud from outside, uh, and it, in my opinion, and this is a thing that's going to keep me is, is is holding me back from getting a separate amplifier. Uh, you know, and bypassing this amplifier, like uh, like maybe with the uh, high end uh, audio control amplifier. Uh, that has a uh, a, a built-in uh, DSP in it so you can, you know, flatten the sound and then redesign it the way you want. It's because I'm worried it's going to it's going to wipe out uh, any um any uh signals that the ANC is sending through. This car has very little padding. Uh there's nothing, basically nothing but a little bit of uh, cotton foam which looks like a pee pad uh in your door. Otherwise, it's directly just a direct door. Uh, going straight out. There's very little sound dampening in this car. Uh, not to say the car's horrendously loud, but you can hear the tires running. And when I had that ANC off, it was not good, guys. Um, now, a lot of people say, you know, you take you turn off the ANC, you know, this is how you unplug the ANC. In the EX, it seems to be very imperative to do it. 
uh, mainly because you're adding, you know, a lot of these people are adding subs, and the ANC is not programmed, uh, wherever the programming is coming from, it's not programmed to handle the sub, and it's sending uh, counter sound waves, and it's killing their sub sounds and, and causing feedbacks and other issues. I highly recommend that if you uh, don't unplug the ANC and the touring. Uh, you can have a sub. In fact, I was running both subs at one time, and it had no problem. Uh, it's, it knows to have sub. And in fact, for EX owners, if we can find a way to find it so you can run your ANC, you know, get an ANC that's programmed with the idea that you're driving a touring as opposed to a EX model. Uh, I don't know how to do that because I don't understand the ANC. I mean, it's just a module, but I guarantee it's the same module in both cars. It's, it's The information being sent to it is coming either from the radio head, uh, probably the head unit itself, or it has to do with whatever amplifier is involved uh, with the car. Uh, with us, it's the premium amplifier. With the EX owners, I think, I don't, I think it's coming directly from the the uh, head unit. We got to find some way to make it uh, make it work, so you guys can actually get an ANC unit that thinks you're driving a touring if you're in an EX model. Because I'm telling you guys, uh, you may have taken it out, you may have not noticed. I'm sure, like I mean, a lot of people, I haven't heard any difference, dudes. There is a difference without the ANC. That thing makes a major difference inside that car. You don't notice it immediately. I didn't notice it immediately, but after driving a week or two, I said, you know, these speakers sound better. But the car is so loud, and I can't over. I can't hear anything. Uh, it, it, it's it's outrageous. Um, this is something you guys are going to really have to look into. Um, I don't have contact with enough people with that kind of technical knowledge. I don't live in California, which is a fantastic place for that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, they're they're modifying cars left and right. I live I live in, in Maine. There are more moose out here than there are people. So uh, I mean, not, we're we're not stupid at all, but we don't have a big following in this kind of stuff. So, the ANC, keep it. And it's the only thing right now, it's the only big caveat, and I'm going to talk with audio control a little bit, and it's the only caveat that's really held me off from possibly the next step of moving to running to another amplifier. So, is it worth it? Yes, it is worth it. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, the equipment I used... Um, which in which include and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start a list. I'm gonna try to put it on the side here. It's probably gonna look right. It's gonna look like shit. I know it. Uh, first of all, I used uh, six of the Metra 72-7800 um, uh, 7800 speaker wire adapters. Uh, that's mostly for your uh, center speaker. Uh, it's gonna be used for your uh, left and right uh, door speakers and your left and right uh, back speakers. Um, you're not really going to end up using it for your sub because your sub's going to be running directly out of your um, out of a uh, uh, out of an amplifier, so you don't have to worry about that. The next are two pairs of QSS65 kicker component speakers. These are their high-end speakers. It's a lot of money. Those are those for the average person, four hundred about four hundred fifty dollars per pair. That's a lot of money, guys. Um, I have to be honest. I get a, I get accommodations for these things, so I get a great deal on these. Otherwise, would it be worth it at that price? Uh, it's hard to say. Comes down to the kind of money you have. Uh, you may have to balance it out. Um, it does make a difference. It comes down to how much I have to listen an hour to work and an hour back in music, and I play my music loud because I don't hear very well and my brain don't work too well, and 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 I I need the loudness. And good speakers make a big difference. So we got two of the QSS65 uh, kicker component uh, speakers. I don't know how I'm going to be able to list these things. I probably I'll list them all at one time because I'm not going to know how to add them on. It's going to be stupid. It ain't going to look right. Um, so far, I, I used one ballistic uh, speaker door kit. Uh, that was to go around the speakers and the doors and so forth, and probably speakers in the back uh, for uh, sound dampening. I also to uh, so far I've used two uh, ballistic trunk kits. That's in order to do the ends uh, the uh, the doors on the driver and passenger and rear driver and passenger and so far the uh, trunk uh, deck lid but I haven't done the inside of the trunk which I'm going to do soon. I also used uh, two sets of Metra 82-7803 speaker rings. Uh, these are the wrong ones. I believe the 7805s are the correct ones. Really doesn't make much of a difference. You just have to, uh, whoever installs will just have to drill two more holes in. Uh, you just have metal drill screws. It, it didn't make any real difference. I used one KSC 350, three and a half inch uh, driver, um, a kicker speaker also for the center. 
and I used one kicker comp R 8 inch uh, subwoofer for the back deck and of course we have one audio control ACM dash 1.300 amplifier that's so far that's uh, what's been put in it uh, that can be pretty expensive for the average person if you can get good deals do do some searching uh, on your good deals I'm trying to remember everything else that, that to think about, uh, things to worry about. The doors come off very easily. Single screw, mostly clips. Uh, the six and a half fit fine. The tweeters, if you use the Kicker QSS series, fit perfect. Some other person used some uh, Infinity and they, they had to fool around. Also, as you saw in my last video, uh, showing you the way to use, uh, the way to, um, uh, you know, watch the last video, I'll tell you the way to, uh, since the um, tweeters don't have a speaker wire adapter made yet, uh, there is a way to uh, to basically siphon off of that line without cutting that tip off, because I tell you, a lot of you don't want to cut that tip off uh, just in case you want to put your old tweeters back or whatever. Uh, that's in the last video, uh, it'll tell you how to do it, um, well, it'll aim you in the right place, uh, how to do it. So the front doors, the uh, center speaker was a, was a, was, a, was a snap. Uh, that was nothing. And the doors were actually pretty easy, too. They're really not out of hard, as long as your tweeters fit well. Uh, there was a video on the first one on that. The rear deck is more involved. There are only four bolts involved, a lot of clips. Uh, and you're going to have to, if you change that sub, you're going to have to do a lot of sound dampening if you're going to play at higher volumes. Um, you, you don't have a choice because you're going to get rattles otherwise. Um, there, there's a fair amount of... Uh, <clears throat> cotton in there it's crap uh but you're gonna need uh, the edges and so forth you're gonna have to you're gonna have to really pat them down um your crossovers i put them uh, underneath you saw them in the uh preview uh there was one preview before before um it was a preview for the rear deck speaker replacement uh we had to put a lot of padding underneath those before we zip tied them up underneath the trunk they look fine they don't rattle. They will rattle otherwise, or you're gonna have to put you have to put something underneath them. Otherwise, they will rattle. Uh, did I run into any other issues? No power issues. Even with with even with the amplifier, I've seen no uh, differences in my uh, miles per gallon. Uh, I don't think you're gonna see massive difference in miles per gallon uh, with this system. Um, you know, the next step would be to run uh, an audio control uh, DSP amplifier. That's a that's that's a big deal. In which case, you're going to involve summing speakers together. That, that gets into a whole other thing. And I'm worried that if I do that, I might lose my ANC, the, the auto noise canceling. And the auto noise canceling does make a difference. Uh, that's, that, that's a big caveat. Uh, that's about as far as I can remember uh, what I did. So you can figure in the average person buying the kickers themselves. So that's figure $400. So that's $800 in speakers for the kickers. Uh, you're figuring the KSC, the center speaker, they come in pair. I think they're about 50 bucks for the pair. You know, that's, that's, you know, 850 bucks. Um, the, uh, the comp bar is another hundred bucks, $950. Uh, the amplifier, <laughs> that's expensive. That's about 250, $300 for that amplifier for the average person. You can get it cheaper, I'm sure. Um, you know, that you get an eleven, twelve hundred dollar range uh here. Uh plus all the extra parts and the uh and, and the trunk kits are like hundred and fifty bucks a pop. A lot cheaper than uh say Dynamat and people will say Dynamat's better. I'm sure it probably is better. How much better is it is it for the same amount, which would probably cost about four hundred dollars? I don't think so. It's a lot of money to put into the system. Now you gotta remember I went for the real high end kickers and you gotta remember I did not pay these same prices. Um, for all of those who can't do the labor themselves, looking at it and finding how hard it is, uh, I had a friend who was able to do it um, and help me out. There is one way to do it on the cheap um, that I would recommend. And a good place because uh, they can be held accountable if they screw things up and so forth. You got all your speakers, you got all your equipment, everything, everything you got, and you want somebody to do it, you can go to a local Best Buy. I know some of you are freaking out. Best Buy. I don't want to go there. Ah, they'll ruin my car. Don't worry. Let them ruin your car. They'll, they'll have to pay to fix it. But they're not going to ruin it. It's, it's, it's really not that hard. Remember, in the end, it's a Honda. It turns out it was a lot. Of, it was very easy. It's a Honda. Um, what, you're, what you can do is you can get something called their total tech support. It's like $200. $200. For $200, 
The speaker installs are free. It, it, it's part of the tech support. Plus, you get all sorts of other benefits for total tech support. So basically, $200, you get all your speakers installed. Uh, you might be able to get matting done for you as well. Uh, it's hard to get the things. You have to talk to them. But basically, that can, that can fall under, I guess, basic labor as an idea. Um, ba uh, amp amplifier, amplifier installs, free. Free with total tech support. Um, I... <laughs> To me, that's an incredible bargain for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. You got a big business, uh, you know, they screw things up. Uh, you know, sure, it might be a pain in the ass, but this is a big company and they're not going to go run and hide. They will, they will pay and fix anything they mess up. And they're generally, uh, they're st they're st their stereo people are generally reasonably comparable, uh, uh, competent. God, I can't say anything. I'm half asleep. So that's 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 my suggestions, my ideas and opinions. Of course, this ran very long. I do apologize. Um, I'm gonna try to also put uh, in in the uh, information um, in the description or whatever. I'm gonna try to put a list of all the parts I used. I'll try. I don't know how it's gonna fit uh, to give you an idea. So you guys can look into all of this stuff yourself. You don't have to use all these same things. As again, I went overboard in the speakers. I needed good speakers. I wanted good speakers, and I and I wanted the audio control. There are other, I'm sure there are other amps that are less expensive. that will give you. You just need you need a good 150 watts of good power, quality power, uh, to push that sub. You can't do it. Whatever's coming out of the system uh, in the touring, it's probably 60, 70 watts. M probably not even that. Uh, I tried it. We tried it directly, and and it, and it shook the sub. Yeah, you blah, 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 like that. Nothing came out. I mean, I turned it a maximum. It was a joke. So, hopefully, this stuff helps you guys out. Hopefully, those videos help you guys out. Uh, you guys have any questions? Feel free to e email me. I have to forewarn you: if the email invokes a more long type of answer that's a little more detailed, I may give you my telephone number and ask you to call me. Uh, nobody wants to call. They, I guess everyone freaks out when you do that. Nobody wants to have a face to face or talk on the phone. Uh, I, you know, I, to me, I'm, 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 I'm opening myself up to crap. But <sighs> it's very difficult for me to talk sometimes. Uh, it is even more difficult for me to write ideas down on paper. So answering emails, I'm more than glad to happy. I mean, I had a few people who, who talked to me. I tried to talk to them, but I tried to tell them, please call me. I can better explain these things uh, if you talk to me directly. Uh, nobody called, but whatever. Uh, you know, I only want to help. You know, I'm actually a pretty nice guy. I'm not going to harass you. Well, I might. If you're good looking and you're looking for a guy, yeah, I might harass you. But aside from that, uh, we'll, we'll change that. All right. Well, I've talked long enough. I I I hope all this information helps you guys out a little bit. Um, I don't know where how i'm gonna i'm hopefully i can i can list the parts on the side and that'll help you guys uh, i don't know i have to do the editing after this and i don't know how well it's going to turn out and i apologize for this video being huge and me having diarrhea of the mouth i hope this helps you guys out if you guys have any other questions hit me up it's verdier 400 at gmail.com that's v-e-r-d-i-e-r -E -E 400 at gmail.com uh if you want to talk to me directly I give out my telephone number. I, I get so many crank calls, it's not even funny. Uh, we can talk directly. And, and, and I'll give you the, the, the most honest opinion I can based on what it is. It's a lot of money. It can be a lot of money. But pretty much almost anything you put in there is going to be better than what's in there now. Uh, it's pretty crap uh, what's in there. So, I mean, you can go for the less expensive, but most stuff's going to be better. All right. <coughs> Diarrhea of the mouth. I'm sorry. I hope this helps you guys. It's been a lot of fun. If I do decide to do the amplifier, I will, of course, do the same thing. I will tell you about the amplifier. I have to do some research. Anyone who has uh, any ideas and so forth. Uh, one other thing. Uh, if you guys, anybody has ideas, um, you know, you can put in the comments, uh, any comments you have. Uh, I'm doing, I'm working on a video now called uh, Wishlists, uh, Weirdness, and What the Fucks. Uh, this is about the Honda Insight and things that you find kind of weird about the car things that you wished were on the car, and things that are 
What the fuck were they thinking? Now, I know a lot of people are going to come up with the same stuff, but if you have uh, things you want me to add, or actually you can wait off until I do the first one. I'm, I'm close to getting it together. Uh, just just put them in the comments or, or send me an email. Even better, send me an email and let me know uh, some ideas. Uh, okay? Verdier signing out. Diarrhea of the mouth. Over. Take care, guys.